Hey everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with the inaugural episode of Repro, a new series we're doing where I take various designs and layouts from across the web and do my best to reproduce those in our builders. We're really looking forward to it and we've got some cool stuff coming up, but we would definitely love to hear from you all as well. So if you know of any websites or layouts that you'd like to see us tackle, definitely let us know in the comments down below. So to get started, we are taking these pricing columns from Stripe's website. If you're not familiar with Stripe, um, I just think their website is sort of a masterclass in design, just their use of color and patterns and layout. There's just so much to take in on every page, and I thought these pricing columns were really cool. There's some interesting layout stuff going on with how they're vertically centered here, and then just the layers of this grid of features here, these call-out buttons, the pricing over here. Lots of cool things that we can take and unpack and use a lot of different techniques that we've been talking about lately in some of our videos to make this all work. So this is the page, kind of take a mental snapshot if you will, and we will hop over to my reproduction in the builders. All right, so there we have it, the big reveal. I'm actually very happy with how this all came together. I think we got very close to the original spirit and feel of the design without using one line of custom CSS, so that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna start from the top and kind of run through my design decisions with you all now. So the first thing was fonts, wanting to match those up as closely as possible, which was actually really easy because when I looked into the font stack that Stripe was using, I saw that they had defined Open Sans as their first fallback for their primary font. So since I knew that Open Sans was freely available in Google Fonts, we can simply load that up through the builder and start assigning it. The fonts are actually really close. The original is a little skinnier than Open Sans, but that's just kind of a very nuancy, nitpicky thing. You could definitely play around with that a little bit more if you wanted to. The next thing was getting this really cool background into the builder. Now, Stripe is actually doing a really neat combination of CSS grid with linear gradients and then skewing all of that with a transform since it's all HTML markup. They're just styling it right in the browser, which is really cool and very flexible. But just to keep everything as native as possible, I basically reproduced it as a screenshot and then assigned it as the lower background layer on that section as a whole. So pretty easy to get the background in there. Now that we've got the more global stuff out of the way, we'll move on to our row here. Now, Stripe is doing a really cool kind of vertical centering of the two columns here, which is incredibly easy to do with our new Flexbox powered rows. So you'll see that I've got them centered both horizontally and vertically. That's because down on mobile, when Stripe's design breaks to one column, there's a little bit of an inset here for this customized column. So I wanted to match that as well by basically applying a max width to my column that won't kick in until it breaks down to uh, one column per row here. Now, a really cool thing about this pattern is that you could actually vertically align it to the top and I think it still looks great because you've got these two titles that line up nicely. And you could also align it to the end because we've got our two call to action buttons down here that look really great. So it's really just kind of up to you. You can get a little more mileage out of this kind of approach if you were to design your own columns using a similar title and similar footer design at the end of each piece. For the row layout as a whole, I'm using my auto-responsive column technique that I've actually talked about in a few videos previously. So if you haven't checked those out, definitely do so. But I basically just really like using this technique to kind of help define a minimum width that I don't want things to get any more constrained beyond that. I think it's great for text-heavy elements like this where I can say, okay, right about here, you know, I don't want these lines to wrap anymore. And so I want it to break all to one line. And that's what this technique is great for. It's very flexible and very easy. So after that, I took a look at how the row was responsively sizing down and saw that they have these kind of fixed margins to the side here of the row. 
that stay there even when it gets down to a mobile device. So I went over here, turned my global container off, and I'm using a calc trick to set the width of the container as 100% minus three rims, which is what's giving me this tiny little gap here to the side. And then this max width helps to just constrain it for very large screens so that it doesn't go beyond that point. Now, as for the columns themselves, I'm actually using the Flexbox layout in here. And there's multiple ways you could approach this. You could use a center alignment and mess with things differently. But I basically started with stretch, which made things like my button and headline always span the entire width of the column. And then for things like this text, I would set a percentage width and then a max width. And again, the percentage width is what's giving me a little bit of spacing away from the edge here. And then that max width is used for situations like this, where the column is full width now. And I don't want this text line to get too long so that it's still readable. One little caveat to that technique is that Stripe is actually using a kind of fixed padding around here and setting things off that way. If you really want all of these dimensions to be very equal, you could use a technique like that. Like I said, there's many different ways you could go about setting this up. I kind of opted to just get it as close as possible without doing too much uh, in the way of negative margins and maybe some things like that to kind of finagle it in place. Next, I wanna talk about the two nested rows that I'm actually using inside these columns. So this pricing section here is actually a row where I used three columns. And then this list of features over here in the customized section is another row. So let's start over here with pricing. I've got another auto responsive technique that I'm using here where instead of setting a hard width as the flex basis, I'm literally using the keyword of auto for every breakpoint, which basically just says this column should constrain to the dimensions of the content inside it, which is what allows me to set this text up and for each column to only be as big as the text inside it. Then I've just got a little bit of a gap here, which we could adjust to make bigger or take it back in. And then we can play around with our vertical alignment. So I could put this to the start or the end or play around with all sorts of different combinations. But I think for this look, the centering looks best. Going over to this row, I'm actually doing something else I talked about in a previous video where I'm using the gap of this row as sort of the border dividing each feature. So if I change this gap to zero pixels, you'll see that there's no more dividing lines inside this box. So those dividing lines are coming from the gap and I've set the background on that row to this particular color. So you see that's where the lines are coming from. And then to get the outer border, air quotes border, I'm setting a padding that matches the inner gap here. Now I go into this whole technique in a little bit more detail in one of our previous videos. So definitely check that out. But that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm bringing that same technique over another nested row. And then I'm just using Flexbox to position the content inside each column centered vertically. And I think that just personally looks best when these lines wrap like this one is doing right here. And this text will remain vertically centered. Beyond that, things are really pretty straightforward for this design. I've got three headlines over here that are using a different graphic for each. I've just set a little max width to make that graphic kind of line up with the text nicely. And to get all these icons lining up the way they are, what I'm doing is I'm setting a width for each headline and then a max width. So what that does is it just ensures that all of these icons will line up to the left here and then the text will expand over to the right. And then when it wraps, we still get that alignment on smaller screens. The final thing beyond that is really just these call to action buttons at the bottom of each column. Uh, just set them up with their dimensions and I've matched the border radius on these buttons to match the border radius on the columns themselves so that there's not any weird overflow stuff happening 
with the background colors on these buttons. Now the one little nuance of this layout that you could say is super nitpicky uh, that you might want to change, but you'll notice that for this column, since it's centered here, there's no border radius here. I did just leave the border radius there because I think it's so small, you don't even notice it here. And then responsively, you would have to change it here with some custom CSS, but since I was trying to get as closely as possible without using that custom CSS, I just left it. And again, I think it's so small that no one would really notice it. Now, the one line of custom CSS that is optional is on this column, there's actually a slight background gradient on this column to give this look here. So if you just absolutely had to replicate that as close as you possibly could, you could hop over into the customized section of that column and then load up a little line of element CSS to give you that look there. But what I basically did was took the two colors that they were using on their site and kind of blended them and got basically a middle color that I think split the difference pretty well and looked great. So that is basically a look at Stripe's pricing columns. I'm really excited with how they came together for this first episode. Again, if you all have any suggestions, layouts or designs you'd like to see us tackle for this series, please let us know in the comments down below. We would love to hear from you guys and we look forward to bringing you more of these repro videos very soon.